It's one of Mother Nature's mysteries, the life and times of rough grouse. On today's show, tag along with researchers who are tagging and banding grouse. Find out why Minnesota leads the nation in rough grouse research. What's the story behind a drumming grouse? Would you believe a mini sonic boom? Meet a modern dead-eye. Sharpshooter Tom Knapp puts on quite a show. Find out what it takes to make a shot like this. Thanks for coming to the show. The men wore camo, the ladies woodsy brown, complete with a one-of-a-kind garter belt. It can only mean one thing, a Northwoods wedding. Just wait till you hear where he proposed. He proposed her in a deer stand. And talk about family values, meet Minnesota's first family of trap shooting. Those stories and more next. Reporting from the North Country, here's Ron Shera and Raven the Black Lab. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know the rough grouse in northern Minnesota is both a wondrous bird and a mysterious one with researchers still looking to unlock the bird's secrets. Let's tag along for another adventure into rough grouse country. A male rough grouse on a drumming log. Playing one of nature's most famous yet mysterious drum beats but also one of its most mysterious. It's empty, so there were no new droppings. Student researcher Laurel Berkeley of the University of Minnesota is studying the life and time surrounding the rough grouse. And the long-term aspect of it is we're trying to figure out what sorts of things affect grouse numbers. We know that they cycle up and down. Um, they increase over five years and they decrease. The historic heart of grouse research in North America is here at the university's forestry center at Cloquet. The center was made famous by the late Gordon Gullion, who spent a lifetime unlocking the many secrets of rough grouse. He knew pretty much everything there was to know about grouse. You probably couldn't find somebody who, who knew more, and his love was really to be here at the forestry center going out and, and scoping out birds and where the logs are, and um, he knew every inch of this forest. I'm looking at habitat selection from a different perspective. And so I want to look at males in different types of habitat and see um, how successful they are at getting other females. Using hidden cameras, Laurel can record how many females are visiting the male grouse on his chosen drumming log. So these are um, systems that the Rough Grouse Society donated money for. We're looking at male behavior. If he starts strutting and fanning his tail and everything, you can tell that a female is approaching. She also spends her spring days trapping and tagging birds. So this is called a mirror trap. And um, it's just basically a fiberglass box um, with a mirror in one end. The next mirror trap Laurel checks has a bird. That bird will add another tidbit of grouse knowledge. So we um, cinch the bag around so that when he flies out, he doesn't get away because <laughs> they're very powerful. <laughs> One, two. Got him. Nice job. New bird. New capture. He will be in 22.04. We're getting set up, so we're going to stick a leg band on him. If a hunter got him, they would turn in his leg band, which is 2204. We'll use the calipers to measure his, his tarsus, his leg bone. And this just gives us an idea of how big they are, like body condition. This grouse doesn't know it, but he offers a full crop of data, ranging from its health and weight to its feathered details. We're actually um, doing some research where we collect um, um, these rump feathers, there are two spots, so males have two spots and females have one. When the exam ends, the grouse is free to go.
Today, the university's grouse research program is supervised by Professor Rocky Gutierrez. Research is, is critical because there are many unanswered questions about grouse. One of the things that we have been interested in is, is how do you count grouse? I thought I heard something. Yeah, and I didn't. Grouse are didn't not like easy to detect. So even though they're, they're conspicuous when they do drum, that we found that if you walk through a, a forest, that you only have a 33% a chance of detecting a grouse if it's actually there. If you watch them closely, you'll see that this bird is doing many things at once. First of all, it's making a sound to attract a female and also to announce its presence to other males. They're very alert. And they're looking around gradually to raise their crest on their head. And when they do that, they're extremely vulnerable to predation. What happens is that, is that as they move their wings, they, they create a vacuum by pulling their wing up. And that air rushing into that vacuum in the downstroke causes a mini sonic boom. And so that's what that sound is. For decades now, the answers to the mysteries of the rough grouse have been found one bird, one feather, one log, one drumbeat at a time. But every answer, it seems, raises new questions. Keeping nature's puzzle, we know, as the rough grouse. Holy frostbite, it's the annual Aitken Fish House Parade, held the Friday after Thanksgiving in Aitken, Minnesota. It's a kickoff to the ice fishing season, but please wait. Wait until there's at least four solid inches of ice before you venture out onto a frozen lake. From hunting dogs to woodsy table settings, when we return, a wedding that was hatched in, would you believe, deer camp. And not Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. Coming up, Minnesota State Trap Shoot is a family affair. Why? You'll find out coming up. What makes a good shot? You've got to be able to move the gun to the target. There's some hand-eye coordination involved. That's basically it. But first, today's Honda Conservation Tip. In Minnesota, the sport of trap shooting is alive and well. But the first family of trap shooting, well, they're not so well known, but boy, can they bust the birds. Our man about the woods, Bill Shirk, has the story. Big wind out on the prairie makes sense to most folks. But a big blow here, that's just not fair. Yes, wind makes target shooting tough. Even tougher when you learn this is Minnesota State Trap Shoot. The big event of the year for folks who get into competitive target shooting. Competitive, the key word. Notice the blinders and unusual shotguns. It's a Craig off K80. And that stock is a fitter they call a fitter stock. Guys like Steve Scheib take target shooting seriously. The gun gets TLC every time Steve shoots. What I do is just release the uh, cocking, the firing pins in there so there's no tension on the springs. Don't want it to wear prematurely. And this gun's got 150,000 rounds to it. Yes, trap shooters practice a lot exactly why these folks are so darn good. But few as good as this crew. See, that's mom shooting there. Son Eric right there. 
And yes, you guessed it, Dad, down on the end. He's won three Grand National trophies, and I've won a couple myself. Minnesota's Munson family, the state's unofficial first family of clay target shooting. I've won probably five ladies' championships uh, for singles and um, probably about the same number for the doubles for ladies. If I can beat Dad in singles, I'm happier than ever. And that, that doesn't happen very often. For good reason, too. He's uh, Minnesota's number one single shooter. And it's uh, quite a deal if I can hold steady with him. It's probably what makes it so much fun. I started shooting in 70, and my wife started the next year. And eventually, son Eric got in on the action. We've done it for so long, and we've gotten to the point now, it's more fun to go to a shoot and see the people, have a cookout, sit around, have a beer with everybody. And it's just great fun. The Munsons traveled together, camped together, and of course, shoot together too. Oh, it's very competitive. Um, like I said, I'm probably not as competitive as I was 10 years ago, but I still like to win. What makes a good shot? You've got to be able to move the gun to the target. There's some hand-eye coordination involved. That's basically it. If you only shoot a one bird at a time, you'll do just fine. Well, unless the wind gets you. It was, it was ugly. Just part of the game at the Minnesota State Trap Show. Best weekend in the world I can ever have is right here. Come on out and try it. It's a lot of fun. Relax, it's all part of the show. Minnesota trick shooter Tom Knapp is standing by with tips, tricks, and ways to wow right the there. crowd. Hunting dogs at a wedding? Why, that's only part of the picture. We'll explain after a brief timeout. For some ATV riders, it doesn't get any better than riding rocks. But before tackling the tough stuff, there's a few key things you may want to remember. Mainly, your body position. Ideally, you want to stand on the floorboards, knees and elbows bent, and keep your body centered over the machine. Plus, keep your speed under control while looking ahead for the next rock. Remember, not all rocks are made to go over. That's this week's Rider's Edge, brought to you by Polaris. You know, there's a Minnesota man who absolutely does magic with his shotgun. He travels all over the world demonstrating his shooting skills. It's time to meet the crack shot Tom Knapp. If life is but a series of hits and misses, is everybody ready to see an old-fashioned shooting show? The life of Tom Knapp doesn't include many misses. Here's one potato, two potato, three potato, and four. Hey! My wife says that I shoot too much. Life for Tom Knapp consists these days of the roar of the crowd. She suggested that I take up the game of golf. A roar when he hits yet another well, target that almost everybody else in America right would miss. Such is the life of a trick shooting showman. Let's try that again. That's my game of golf with a Benelli golf club. For Knapp, who lives in Elk River, Minnesota, a true aim has always come easy. There is the pheasant, right there. I was nine years old. I had a Daisy Model 25 BB gun. I had an ugly dog. I couldn't get enough of either one of them. It was a passion that developed into an obsession. And when you become obsessed with anything, then you can't tire of it. And the, uh, the term of uh, practice makes perfect, of course, uh, really holds true. Hey, nice, nice, go on. Ho -ho. Fame as a trick shooter Seven is a tough targets. target, but Tom Knapp That's never quit. Is. Today, he's become a national shooting icon, a TV celebrity, and he performs more than 100 trick shooting shows a year. 
Thanks for coming to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Far from the crowds here on the prairies of South Dakota. Good girl, Sophie. Tom Knapp is at home. Home with a shotgun, a bird dog, and fields of ringneck pheasants. Rooster! His every move with a firearm is caught on video for a television show. Okay, take her slow. You notice that I'm carrying my, my gun in a, quite a vertical position. I'm kind of a sticker for gun safety in the field. When you're hunting with other people, it, it's uh, real important to keep track of all of the other players. Despite his expert shooting eye, birds of a feather, well, they don't fly like birds of clay. These wild birds, these guys do tricks that are real hard to keep up with. Rooster! The trick shooter must be kidding. <laughs> or maybe Sophie. he wasn't kidding. Rooster! Now, if you happen to see yeah. me miss, it might not be a miss at all. So I like to entertain myself to see how close I can get to the bird without hitting it. I found out that that little gift of BS that I got is probably even more valuable than my shooting. But as an ambassador to sports shooting, Tom Knapp doesn't joke about his role. Our country were, was basically molded and founded around guns, and it wasn't just for protection. It was hunting, it was subsistence, it was putting food on the table. Hey, Rooster! And how should the trick shooter be remembered on, when he aims his last? <laughs> My tombstone. Come on. Good girl. Here lies a pretty good shot. Can the outdoors be romantic? Well, this couple certainly thinks so. When we return, true romance, a wedding that began in Deer Camp. Yes, there are some unusual weddings these days. We've featured folks getting married on the ice and in other odd places. Up next, one more, a romance that began in a tree stand. I'm so glad. It's raining. We got to enjoy it. It's the best we can do. These folks are not going to let a summer shower dampen their wedding party. <laughs> it's an outdoor wedding. You got to expect anything. Meet Sean and Brittany Vessel. Their wedding has a very unusual theme. With camouflage accented suits for the guys. Bossy oak gray golf. Deers, antlers, ducks, that's pretty much what I'm seeing as a theme. Autumn colored dresses for the gals. Instead of having the laser orange offset, the green kind of tamed it down a little bit with the rustic burnt orange. Complete with, would you believe, camel garter belts? It's so sexy. Looks like a deer camp wedding. Then hunting dogs must be on the guest list, right? Come on, be nice. A wedding like this must have been inspired by a woodsy marriage proposal. He proposed her in a deer stand. He brought me over and drove down the field and walked me up a deer stand, which is a huge deer stand. They call it the Hilton. And we walked in there and he's like, this is where I want you to sit tonight. This is where you're going to see a deer, da, 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 da. And then he got down on one knee and asked if I would marry him and go hunting with him for the rest of his life. So that's what he got. And I said, yes. How romantic. A proposal in a deer stand. Hence, the cake and table settings reflect their love of deer hunting and the natural world. During the wedding ceremony at the Roseville Arboretum, everyone seemed to get into the theme. Yes, everyone. <laughs> so now they are husband and wife. Hi, thank you. Or should we say, buck and doe? Happy hunting, Sean and Brittany. May all your deer camps be filled with limits and love. We hope they continue to share their deer stand for many years. That about does it for us. Remember, introduce the kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Shera, and of course, the star of the show is Ray.
Some guests appearing receive dinner for two at Timber Lodge Steakhouse. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Phone 1-800-899-7433. For information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.